fans of this sport are built differently. They demand excellence and expect nothing less. Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond is a show dedicated to the fans. Your new home for Big Ten Wrestling is here, and it starts now. Welcome inside another edition of Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Rick Pizzo joined, as always, by Shane Sparks. No big Big Ten conference duels this past weekend, but the league does get involved in nine non-conference matchups and a really solid weekend for the Big Ten. The Big Ten flexed its muscles eight and one against the non-conference opponents. Stage is set now, Rick. Final tune-up. Big Ten championships less than two weeks away. Marquee non-con matchup this weekend could be found in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's also where Shane Sparks could be found this weekend. He watched Iowa put on a virtuoso performance, handing the Cowboys their first loss of the season. Iowa won seven of ten bouts. Really important wins by Michael Caliendo. And how about the year that Zach Glazier is having? Closes out a duel for the sixth time time this year for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Senior day inside of Rec Hall honoring the Penn State seniors, the Nittany Lions, a shutout once again, 55-0 over Edinburgh, all 10 matches, bonus point victories, not a single match went to the third period. Big win for Penn State, plenty of momentum, and they will roll in the Maryland. But the biggest story coming out of that duel, Shane, the injury to Carter Starachi in control as he closes out a tech fall victory. Starachi actually had to be helped off the mat. No official update as of yet for Penn State. Of course, the three-time national champion hadn't given up a takedown, hadn't lost a match this year. We'll update you on his Big Ten status as we know more. Top-ranked Ridge Lovett was knocked off for the first time this season at Arizona State. Three-time All-American and fourth-ranked Kyle Parco beat the Cornhusker 4-3 the final score behind a second-period takedown. Ridge Lovett, first defeat of the season, but don't worry, he'll be back. How about the Iowa women's wrestling team? NWCA dual champions already. The Hawkeyes go to the regionals and will send all 15 team members to the nationals. They had six champions, five runner-up finishers, two third-place finishers, and two fourth-place finishers. It's not even an official NCAA sport yet, and Clarissa Chun is building a dynasty, and we will talk with one of those Iowa women's wrestlers coming up a little bit later in the show. But we start our team storyline conversation with the Iowa men. I mentioned that you got to see it firsthand. There have been questions this year about exactly where Iowa was in the national picture. I think they probably answered a lot of those questions in Stillwater. I told you two or three weeks ago, Rick, the sky is not falling in Iowa City. This is a very good team. It was a great atmosphere. Sold out Gallagher Iba Arena in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The Hawkeyes win seven of ten matches. They got to their offense. In match scoring, 62 to 32. Iowa over Oklahoma State, 11 takedowns to five. Got off to a really good start with Drake Ayala at 125, a nice win over Troy Spratley. Michael Caliendo defeated Isaac Olenek, 7-2, a couple of really nice takedowns. Bonus points from Patrick Kennedy at 174. You mentioned Zach Glazier. And Ben Keeter, the true freshman heavyweight, knocks off Connor Doucette, who's ranked 11th, 5-1. That was a get-right match for Iowa. Impressive performance. It's a great rivalry, Wick. Rick, now it's 29-26. to the Cowboys with the slight lead, but I was now one eight of ten. They felt good in Stillwater over the weekend. I know you love to go to Iowa City. You've been trying to get me to a duel there you forever. Get you there, Rick. But Gallagher Iba also a great place to see yes, a duel, especially when you get to see one between teams like Oklahoma State and Iowa. Now we update what may be the most important story of the weekend, certainly is for Penn State, and that's the injury to Carter Starachi. We're obviously not sure of his status right now. He was in pain, had to be helped off the mat. I think a question that a lot of folks are asking is, what happens if Starachi is not 100% for the Big Tens? What are the rules? How is he able to wrestle inside the Big Tens if he's not 100%? And what does that mean for him in terms of his status at Nationals? My guess is most Penn State fans were thinking about Jason Nall. Remember in 2018 in January, he was hurt against Rutgers. They held him out. They brought him back to the Big Tens. Nolf at that point actually wrestled a couple of matches, and then he injury defaulted out. Situation for Carter Starachi is he must weigh in at the Big Ten Championships in Maryland. At that point, he can come on the mat. One second is wrestled, and he injury defaults. It will cost him a loss, but... 
That would qualify him for the national tournaments. They're putting more emphasis on the conference tournaments with the seating, so it may cost him a seat or two, perhaps. But first and foremost, it's the health. I mean, they got to get him right. We'll see how they play. It's still three and a half weeks away from the NCAA tournament. We'll see what, how, what happens. Yeah, and Kale Sanderson saying, just like every other wrestler, we're trying to make sure he is healthy at 100% and ready to go for the Nationals. We will see what that means for his status at the Big Tens in College Park. Ridge Lovett loses for the first time this weekend. But I go back to what you said about the Iowa team, and you told everybody the sky's not falling. Let's not overreact here to a loss for one of the best guys at his weight class against another guy who is an All-American caliber wrestler. First and foremost, credit to Ridge Lovett and Kyle Parko of Arizona State for showing up. Didn't have this to. This is why you wrestle at Nebraska. You want to wrestle against the best competition. And Ridge Lovett, I love the attitude. He showed up. Kyle Parko, three-time All-American. He's only got one loss this season to Caleb Henson that was actually on the mat. He had a countable medical forfeit at the Midlands as well. So officially, he is 19-2. and two. He's really, really good. He got a second period takedown. He won 4-3. to three. As we know, Rick Sports, the circumstances of the day. Kyle Parko was better than Ridge Lovett for that seven-minute span. What does it mean moving forward? I'm not sure, but I can promise you this. Ridge Lovett is going to be just yep. fine. It may mean something in terms of the seating for those two guys at the NCAAs, but Love It is still the favorite at that weight class inside the Big Ten. He is going to be one of the favorites, without a doubt, at Nationals. Let's give some love to Indiana. Finishing off against Chattanooga in the non-con and doing so in fine fashion, also saying goodbye to a couple of really quality wrestlers. It was senior day for Indiana. Angel Escobedo now in his sixth year. Graham Brooks, one of those seniors. Brooks has wrestled only for Angel Escobedo at Indiana. Remember last year, Graham Brooks, a really good national tournament. He lost in the blood round. Here's Brayton Lee, I think one of the best stories in Big Ten and across the country. He's 8-0 undefeated. They got a really good 1-2 punch at 184 and 197 with Roman Rogotsky and Gabe Sollers. Some good things are happening in Bloomington with the Hoosiers, 6-1 at home, 7-5 on the season. Back-to-back -back seasons with seven wins or more in the dual meet season. Hats off to Indiana. Well done. Let's expand the women's wrestling conversation, which right now starts in Iowa City. The best women's wrestlers in the nation are right there. Members of the U.S. Olympic team already, part of the national team. These women are set. They're at the forefront of trying to build something. And when you win, people pay attention. And they didn't just win this weekend at regionals. After already being crowned dual meet champions, all 15 members of the team qualify for nationals. They have champions. They have runners up. It's pretty amazing right now what's happening. And I think more attention will be brought to what is taking place in Iowa City with women's wrestling as a whole. When the Iowa women take the mat, the scoreboard's got to take deep breaths. They scored a ton of points. 21 tech fall victories, Rick. You talked about the 15 for 15, six champions. Kylie Welker was phenomenal. She was on the mat for two minutes, a couple of tech falls, and a pin. They'll wrestle now at the national tournaments, March 8th and 9th. Super exciting things going on, not only in Iowa City, but this is monumental for women's wrestling across the country. This is fantastic. And I'll tell you what, as we continue here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond, we're going to have more from the Iowa Women's Wrestling Program because we're really excited that this week's guest is none other than the aforementioned Kylie Welker. She's undefeated. She is the top-ranked wrestler at her weight class, and she is just unbelievable. We'll ask her all about being one of the faces of a sport that is just in its infancy but growing. And, of course, Shane doesn't want to just talk about the what, the hows, and the whys. That's on the way, and tough seeding decisions. We feel bad for the guys that have to fill out this year's Big Ten tournament bracket. She is unbeaten. She is top ranked. She is one of the faces of women's college wrestling, really women's wrestling overall. She is Kylie Welker, and she's kind enough to join us on this week's edition of Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Kylie, welcome in. I, I kind of want to start there. What's it like for you and everybody that's on this team to be at the forefront of this movement? Not yet an NCAA sponsored sport, but one that seems to be growing in popularity. And you are the ones that everybody younger than you wanting to participate in this sport are looking up to. Yeah, I mean, it's an honor, really. Um, 
we're starting something that's bigger than us. It's bigger than the program. So, um, you know, r- women's wrestling has came so far, but uh, it still has so much, so much growing to do, and it's really cool to be a part of that, especially here at Iowa. And people follow when you win. And you guys have not just been winning, you have been dominating. You're dual meet champions a little while ago. And then this past weekend at regionals, we see all 15 team members going to nationals. And I want to talk about your weekend because you're on the mat for three bouts, but they last a total, a combined two minutes and one second. I'm not sure what's more impressive, a 26-second pin or two tech falls that take a combined 95 seconds. So what's that feeling like when you know that all the hard work that you've put in manifests, manifests itself into the kind of weekend that you had? Yeah, I mean, I went into the weekend just with the thought process of I wanted to have fun. Um, I've been trying to, you know, implement into my routine before walking out of the mat that I want to try new things. I want to do something fun. So I think with that, like, mindset and just, like, the growth mindset in general, like, um, being able to walk out there and have fun is, like, honestly the most important right now. And um, I mean, I, I think I had some fun this weekend, so it turned out pretty well. I think that's probably a fair bet. Kylie, it's incredible when you look at the growth of women's wrestling across the country. So many young girls look at you. You're a great role model. When you were younger, how did you get involved in the sport, and who did you look up to? Yeah, so I started at a really young age. I started when I was four. Um, My parents kind of – my parents put my brother in it, and then I, like, followed in the footsteps. Um, So I've been doing it for a super long time, and when I was – really younger I mean I remember looking up to Jordan Burroughs and then Kyle Dake of course and then on the women's side um I've always looked up to Helen Maroulis and uh, I looked up to Adeline Gray and um all of those girls and even my coach Clarissa so um yeah those are kind of the people who I looked up to and now it's really cool that to think that I'm in the position where people look up to me and younger athletes look up to me so it's definitely like a different side of things but it's honestly like it's really awesome It's incredible what you've been able to accomplish already this early in your career. You've had so many great accomplishments. But in this sport, there are always some setbacks. When you look at some of your setbacks, which one did you learn the most from? I mean, yeah, there's always setbacks in the sport. Um, I've been injured quite a bit. Um, I've had some big injuries. And those, you know, were opportunities to look at the sport through a different angle. When I was injured, I was coaching at my youth club and uh, just really toning in on lifting. So I feel like that was a big, um, you know, learning moment for me. And then on top of it, I feel like, um, you know, losing at Olympic trials, the last one, um, I think it gave me a better idea of what to expect, like moving forward. So um, I think those were two really big, you know, setbacks in my career Uh, but obviously like we all have so many setbacks and you learn from every single one of them because you know if you're if you're winning you're learning but if you're losing you're also you're learning more than if you're winning so um like you said they're huge in everyone's career Kylie I'm curious as to what you see this sport having given you other than just the wins and losses and the opportunity to wrestle at Iowa you were recently in Croatia for a tournament I know part of the national team you get to go to all these different places when you think about What being a wrestler has provided for you, things that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise been able to do, what kind of jumps to your mind? I think the first thing that really jumps to my mind is the community. Um, I don't think there's anything like wrestling community. You know, I've been in other sports. I've been, you know, I've played football. I did mountain biking. Like, I've done, I did gymnastics for eight years. Like, I was in so many different sports, and there's just nothing like the wrestling community. Um, The friends, the coaches, you know, the fans, like everything that comes along with Um, wrestling I think that's one of the biggest things and then like opportunities like I you know I'm going to Iowa like I would have never expected that I would have been able to do that and then even like I've traveled to like 15 16 different countries so even that's insane like I started traveling the world at a super young age so it's just like all those opportunities like that that I just would have never expected to have um, outside of wrestling so it's yeah it's a blessing. You wrestle for one of the all-time greats in women's wrestling here in the United States, Clarissa Chun. Describe the impact that she's had on you. Yeah, Clarissa, she's so knowledgeable. Um, Anytime, you know, I have a conversation with her, it's like she always has something new to teach me. And it's just like, you know, like I want to sit there and just be poured into. And she does a great job doing that with all of us. Um, And then, you know, you can't forget Tanya, too. You know, she's so knowledgeable. And they're, you know, Gary and 
Tanya and Chun, they're also knowledgeable in the sport of wrestling, but also in life. So it's like I'm not only learning from them um, as a, through like a wrestling standpoint, but also like through life. So um, it's awesome. It's it's cool to be you know coached and mentored by some some of the best in wrestling. All right, Kylie, let's close with one that's definitely a little bit off the beaten path. I read an interview with you. Very interesting. You said one of your pet peeves is that everyone thinks that female wrestlers are masculine, that we're mean, that you're actually, quote, and I'm using your words here, girly girls. And as an example, you said one of my favorite TV shows is The Summer I Turn Pretty. It's also one of my daughter's favorites. So I leave you with this question. It's the one everybody wants to know the answer to. Team Jeremiah or Team Conrad? Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, I'm Team Jeremiah, personally. That is the only correct answer from a woman who rarely gets it wrong and never when she is on the mat. Kylie Welker, undefeated, top ranked at 170, the favorite to win it all. Kylie, we truly appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck with everything you do. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome stuff. Get to learn a little bit more about women's wrestling for our viewers. And coming up next, you'll get to learn the why behind what you see. Shane Sparks is talking a little bit of technique on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Back on wrestling and beyond, and it's time to examine the science of the sport. It's not just about what you see each weekend on the mats inside the Big Ten. It is the how it happens, and that's exactly what this next segment explains. Talking technique here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond inside the Michigan Wrestling Room. Shane Sparks alongside Alec Pantelio, three-time All-American and a Big Ten champion for Michigan, going to show us his roll-through tilt. Yep, basic roll-through tilt, guys. If you're, hey, if you're going to be on top in a wrestling match, it's not much just about riding. It's about scoring points. Right? This is your position to score, right? So, off the bottom, he really has two options. He's either going to sit to his butt or he's going to try and stand to his feet. I know that. I'm ready for it. So, let's say this time he tries to come up with an inside step, right? Uh, I'm on top, boom, right, blows the whistle. Good, I know that's happening, so I'm ready. I'm gonna trap this arm right here at the wrist. Tight, all right? As you can get. This hand is gonna push his elbow across the body. It's gonna turn his body, all right? Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take tight through the body right here. I'm gonna take my head, I'm gonna go in between his legs, I'm gonna do almost like a forward roll somersault and catch him into a tilt right here. So, as I'm rolling, boom, right here. Notice, bottom leg up. This foot elevated. If I have this foot down, you're just gonna roll through his belly. Right? If I don't have this foot elevated right here, right, he might be able to lay around and get out. Right? So I've gotta keep this foot up right here. I'm getting my back points, right? So, it's a simple, easy move. This is probably one of the first moves you're gonna learn on top. Maybe that a power half or a cradle, but it works. I mean, it's literally you're setting a trap, right? So, I'll do this one more time. Boom, stands up, I'm trapping right here. I like to take the elbow and push it across the body. Some guys like to cinch tight, right? Some guys like to take their hand and roll through the legs. Personally, I like this, right? Take my head, I'm looking where I'm going, I'm throwing my body through, it's all momentum. Catch, right here, the end of my points, right? If he starts rolling this way, I'm pulling. If he starts rolling into me, I'm pulling with my other hand, right here, all right? The only recommendation I'll say to you guys, if you're at home and you get tilted and you get pinned in a tilt, make sure you go back to the drawing board. No one's getting pinned in a tilt. You get into some, some <laughs> back points here, but no one gets pinned in, pinned in a tilt. Um, other than that though, guys, it's a really, really efficient move. Definitely added to your arsenal. I mean, we live in a world now, if you get a four point near fall, that's pretty hard to come back from, right? So use that to your advantage and win on a turn on top. Roll through tilt, Michigan All-American Alec Pantaleo, talking technique here on Big Ten Wrestling and beyond. I know Alec may have a pound or two on you, but it looks like he's a guy that's trying to go a little bit easy because he knows the damage he could do if he goes full bore. Rick, I taught him everything he knows. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, if you've been teaching him, then you've been doing some good work because he is not just helping with talking technique. He is still wrestling at the highest level, capturing the Pan Am 70K gold, a forfeit win in the finals, but he went 4-0 on the day because his other three matches were all techs. And how about this, Shane? punching his ticket to the U.S. Olympic trials in April. Yeah, what a great weekend. 70 kilos, that's a weight class he's been really good at. Good tweet right here. You got Mason Paris, 
Alec Pantelio, Josh Trella there on the right side. It was a really good weekend for some of those former Wolverines. Our congrats to Alec and Mason, who won the gold as well at a slightly higher weight class. It's really amazing when you see these guys in comparison to see the size of a guy like Mason Paris and think back to how agile he's able to be on his feet at that size. Well, he was such a phenomenal competitor, Big Ten champion, multiple time All-American. I mean, these guys are so good. They got big aspirations. And as you said before, Olympic trials in April at Penn State. He's got big dreams. He wants to represent this country in Paris. Our congrats to both Alec Pantilio and Mason Paris. One final break on wrestling and beyond. If you're the guy filling out the bracket, it's at 25, 57, 84. I wish you the best of luck because there are no right answers. Don't forget Big Ten Wrestling Championships this year from the Xfinity Center on the campus at the University of Maryland. And you can only see it right here on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app all day, March 9th and 10th. One of the biggest questions heading into those championships, what will the brackets look like, especially at weight classes that are packed chain like at 125? This weight class has been crazy in the Big Ten and across the country. Matt Ramos, he'll be the number one seed, eight no, or at least I expect him to be. Drake Ayala, Eric Barnett, Patrick McKee, Michael Leogostino, so many guys, Braden Davis, the true freshman. I have no idea how this one shakes up. One of the most exciting weight classes in the country in any conference. I love what we have at 157. Levi Haynes is the favorite, but he's got some challengers. Chase Saldate of Michigan State is 7-1. Michael Block is undefeated in Big Ten duels at 8-0. We know about Jared Franick at Iowa. Brayton Lee of Indiana could play spoiler. Saldate Block is both previous guests on Big Ten Wrestling and beyond. And what about the bracket at 184? This 184-pound bracket with Lenny Pinto, Isaiah Salazar, Ryder Rogotsky, the pinning machine from Ohio State, tough guy like Lane Melcheski from Michigan State. This will be fun. This will be a good scrap. Bernie Truax at 184 for Penn State as well. Cannot wait to see what those brackets look like when they are released. As always, for Shane Sparks, I'm Rick Pizzo. We appreciate the hang on Big Ten Wrestling and beyond. Don't worry, we're back. Another show coming your way next week.